profit statement, absorption costing. In this episode, we are going to discuss how management accountants prepare their profit statement, which differs from that being prepared by the financial accountant. So, for the profit of the management accountant, they start with the standardized profit. So, the standardized profit is how much they have budgeted to sell by the profit per unit. It's not like that with a financial accountant. They have to look at the actual sales multiplied by the selling price then offset before they get to the profit. After the standardized profit has been gotten, then they adjust for any variances because it was based on a budgeted. When the actual is received, any differences will have to be what offset it. So the variances can be the over or under absorption of the overhead cost. Normally the material and the labor, there is not much problem in relation to that. You know the unit cost. So if it is more, just multiply by it. If it is less, you do likewise. And we come to the standardized profit. It is the selling price per unit multiplied to the number of sales units. Then we less it by the total cost of production. So when we come to the total production cost or the estimated cost, we have the material cost per unit. Then we add the labor cost per unit. And now add the production overhead cost per unit. Now the production cost per unit is the budgeted expenditure divided by the budgeted total production unit or the budgeted total hours in care depending on the suitable criteria. This will lead to a total production cost. Then you now have to add the non-production cost which will lead to the total cost. Now let's look at why management accountants are interested in budgeting. Budgeting is important because it helps a business plan for its resources. So at the beginning of the year, a business can determine how much they want to sell or they intend trading in. So if they want to sell more, then they have to get the resources to be able to produce what they target. Secondly, budgeting helps to plan for expenses. Once you've seen the quantity of resources that you need, the amount of material, the number of hours or the number of labor required, you will be able to determine the cost per unit. When you multiply by the quantity, it will give you how much you require financially to be able to make your plan materialize. Thirdly, budgeting is essential for setting a selling price. Once you have been able to realistically determine the resources you need and their related expenses, you will now be able to add a margin or a markup to it to arrive at a selling price. And lastly, it enables control. Once you have a budget, you will be able to juxtapose to the actual performance of the business. Any deviations will be easily remedied. Let's test our understanding. ZPLC produces books. A book is budgeted to require 5 meters of paper at $3 per meter, 2 hours of labor at $1 per hour, and a variable production overheads of $5 per unit. Fixed production overheads are budgeted at $30,000 per month. A monthly average production is budgeted to be 10,000 units. The selling price is fixed at $35 per unit. There is a variable selling cost of $2 per unit and fixed selling cost of $1,000 per month. During the first two months, Z Limited expects the following level of activity. So production unit $12,000 for January, $9,000 for February. Sales unit $10,000 for January, $11,000 for February. So we are supposed to prepare the cost card using absorption costing and prepare budget profit statement for January and February. So for solution, the cost card will start with the cost per unit. We bring material. It will take 5 meters of paper for $3 each, giving $15. For labor, they are charging $1 for every hour, which is 2 hours for each book to be produced, which is 2 hours. For the overhead variable, it was stated to be $5. Now for the fixed overhead, that is the total fixed overhead cost of $30,000 divided by the total production budgeted of $10,000. So it will give $3. So we will now have $25 as the total cost of the book. The book is to be sold at $35 per unit. So the standardized gross profit is $10. Now we move to the operational statement. We will start with the sales. We already know the standardized gross profit. It was $10. We multiply by the amount of sales. That was actually seen. So it was $10,000 for January multiplied by the profit. $11,000 for February multiplied by the profit. So $100,000 for January. $110,000 for February. 
they will now adjust for variances. So the variance that we are looking at, we have to check whether there is over and under absorption. There was an over absorption of 6,000 and under absorption of 3,000. It is a plus for January because over means that they produce more than they budgeted. When you produce more, the smaller portion absorbed all the expenses. It means that the extra goods will be selling without any fixed expenses. I mean, the profit is going to be high. We have to add it up. So when we come here, we realize that the business budgeted to produce 10,000, but they actually produced 12,000. So the 10,000 had absorbed all the overhead costs for January. So the 2,000 difference is what led to the 6,000, which is a plus. But when we come to February, they budgeted to produce 10,000, but they actually produced 9,000. It means that the cost has been spread over a bigger quantity, but they produce less. The difference is what is going to be the under absorption. This will lead to the actual gross profit. We add, it will be 106,000 for January, 107,000 for February. Then we now bring the variable selling cost. Don't make a mistake to add this to the cost card. This is indirect and non-production. It is 20,000 for January, which is the selling unit times the variable cost per unit. It's 10,000 for January, multiplied by two is 20,000. 11,000 sales units multiplied by $2 is 22,000. Then for the fixed cost, it's just 1,000 for each month. So the actual net profit for January provide $85,000 and $84,000 for February. Let's test our understanding again. And the Limited provides medical services. A service is budgeted to require direct material costs at $5 and two hours of labor at $1 per hour and variable production overheads of $5 per unit. They budget to work 5,000 hours monthly and to have a fixed overhead cost of $400,000. The price per service is fixed at $35 per unit. There is a variable service cost of $2 per service and fixed service cost of $1,000 per month. During the month of January, and the Limited have the following actual levels of activity. Their sales unit is 20,000. Labor hours actual is 48,000. Overhead actual is 380,500. We have to prepare a cost card using the absorption costing. Prepare budget profit statement for January. For solution the cost card, the direct material is $5 as stated in the question. Direct labor is two hours for each book to be produced at a labor cost of $1 per hour, given $2. Then the variable overhead as stated is $5. The fixed overhead will now be the $400,000 fixed overhead cost divided by the 50,000 hours. We are now absorbing based on the labor hours because it's a service oriented business. It will give us the absorption rate per hour, which is $8 per hour. And it requires two labor hours to produce a book. So it will be eight times two, which is 16. It will give a total cost of $28. The service fee is $35. It means that the standardized profit per unit will be $7. When we move on to the operational statement, for January, the standardized profit will be $140,000, which is the 20,000 service unit times the $7, which is $140,000. We will now adjust for over or under absorption. So there will be an over absorption of $3,500, which is the 48,000 actual hours worked multiplied by the absorption rates of $8 per hour. Okay, then we less the actual overhead incurred. So the difference will be more. It means that they absorbed more than they incurred. Okay, so they have added more cost to the product. So they now have to add this figure back. So actual gross profit will be $143,500, the sum. Then you come to the variable selling cost which is the 50,000 labor hours divided by two. This will give you the actual number of services rendered because if it takes labor two hours to render a service and their total budgeted hours is 50,000, it means that divided by two will give you the actual number of services that they will render. will give 25,000. You multiply by $2 for the variable cost. will give you $50,000. Fixed cost is 1,000, meaning the actual net profit will be $92,500.